Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This store is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Get signed up for their email distribution list to find out when the store will be opening, what their hours will be, and most importantly, what they will have in inventory at abvbarrelshop.com. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we complete a bracket challenge to determine the best cheap wedding reception bourbon. My name is Justine Mays. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Jim Fosnott and Kathy Cool. Hey, gang, what's up? How are we doing? Hello. Good, good. So, and I think we'll be joined by Ryan Thompson of 10th Mountain Distillery too. He's supposed to be here. So hopefully we can get him by the uh, next segment and then we can play a full game of our uh, bracket challenge. Usually you got to have an odd number. So, uh, you know, when, and he was supposed to be on, but uh, time zones got crossed up and uh, he's not here right now, but uh, should he show up, then we've got five and it makes life a lot easier versus three. Um, not quite as fun, but uh, either way, we'll make this thing work. But before we get to all that, Jim said there's something he wanted to talk about. What is that, Jim? So I was listening to the radio on my way into the shop the other day, Steve, and they're having a conversation that was kind of interesting and giving some facts out there, but through a question at the end, but they're talking about sleep. And, and we kind of, we were talking about this off air before we started the, the last recording about sleep, but um, just some facts, like the average person sleeps 23 years of their life. You spend 23 years, if you live to be, you know, 72, 73, um, at eight hours a day sleeping, yeah. is, uh, that's 24 years. But the question I have that they asked is, if you can live your entire life with never sleeping, but have no ill effect from it, so you were never tired, you were always wide awake, felt good, you know, whatever else, if you could live your entire life without sleeping... You know, if you had a choice, press A, I sleep eight hours a night, B, I don't ever have to sleep again, but I feel fine. What would you choose? Oh, I would never sleep again because I need the extra time. Yeah, I, I, I would love the idea of that. Uh, I don't, to, to me, there's no downside. Uh, yeah, I guess people would say they feel lonely. I don't know. It's, you know, not for me. I just work on the computer. I, I get all my work done uh, overnight and then be ready to go and hang out with you guys during the day. How fun would that be? <laughs> You guys look excited. You guys look, you guys look enthused. Justine, I want to play poker with Justine because her facial expressions, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Justine looks thrilled. So, yeah. Uh, how about you guys? What, what what are you selecting there? Are you going for the, uh, I, no, I'll keep my life as is. I like sleeping. Or would you go with no more sleep? I'm sleeping. You're sleeping. Yeah. Okay. I'd be bored. You'd be bored. Yeah. Damn. I don't have the AB ne ABV network. Maybe you could start one. Yeah. With an extra 23 years of your life, what could you do? The VBA network. It's just reversed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, Kathy's got a I she, like she naps. I, I like sleeping. I like comfy beds. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Justine, how about you? Would you select sleep or be awake? Yeah. I mean, if I had zero effect from not sleeping like i would just yeah not sleep i mean that's kind of the reason why people sleep now is because you get tired you need to replenish your body if you had zero effect from the no sleep and you could just go about your business i'd just go about my business yeah plenty of shows to binge watch binge watch um, i would start a pretty good workout routine <clears throat> yeah <laughs> be a very aggressive workout routine with those new hours yeah Oh yeah. 
Oh, doing my sit-ups and whatnot. Oh, yeah. That's travel kind of more. Travel more. Yeah. Uh, more of everything. So it'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. Now, how about you, Jim? I, I'm with you. I, I would never sleep again. I don't, I, uh, I dread the idea of sleep now because I don't sleep well to begin with. Like I couldn't tell yeah. you last time I slept more than four hours in a row straight. Like, um, so sleep to me is kind of a miserable experience anyway. And 23 years, what can I do with 23 more years? Right. Uh, so many fantastic things I think I could accomplish. And then on another part that no one thinks about is I don't need a bedroom anymore. Like take the bed out of my house. There's a bunch of extra. Well, space. there is. No, I, had closet. I guess. I, I guess Jim's only re reason for a bed is sleeping. Man. The rest yeah. of us may How still do you need feel bed. about that? Yeah. <laughs> we still got the pool and the hot tub and the you know kitchen table and the you know, kitchen table. I would still want to keep my bed. My bed is pretty comfortable. You can yeah. lounge in that while yeah. you're binge watching Netflix. Binge -watch Reading a book. I mean, yeah, there's it's it's, it's nice. And I could I could get some of that space back, you know. It's a Murphy bed. Or back. instead of having if, if everybody in the family didn't sleep, maybe we only have a couple of beds, not you a know. rotating bed, yeah. yeah, there yeah you that's, go. that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. With that, you know, change the sheets hourly, Steve. That way you know Oh my it. god. <laughs> he went there. He did you're the one who brought him up, so well, uh, I'm just saying I it was you know, I I anyway. think so yeah, if I could not sleep again, I would have. I would have, wouldn't even question. I'd press that button tomorrow. Heck and, yeah! And, and be able to get so much more done in my life, and uh, give me twenty three extra years. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. All right. Well, guess what, gang? It is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? We're going to start with Justine Mays. Justine, what do you got there? I have MB Roland. Okay. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. Could be enough. We'll see. We'll see. Jim, what do you got? I've got the uh, the Leatherwood that he bottled for us just there to cast strength. This is the only for you, Fox bottle, if you okay. recall. The, <laughs> oh, yeah. So this That's is a, a, a brand new bottle, so we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah, that's that's the lead. Yeah, that's pretty darn good. That guy, you got to love that guy. He, he, yeah. he, uh, you ask him, why, how come he doesn't care about writing something like that? He's like, well, I fought for your freedom to do that, my freedom to do that. And you, you, there's no response to that. That guy literally yeah. did. <laughs> I mean, he's like, who's going to come after me? Like, yeah. 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 Guy's a green beret, for God's sake. So, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, he's he's an amazing guy. It's a fun story to go to. So, yeah, check out Leatherwood if you get the chance. All right. Uh, how about you there, Kathy? What do you got? I'm going to open this one. It's the little limousine ride. Oh, yeah. Okay, cute. It's going to be tiny. Is that a screw top? No, it's a cork. No, it's a cork. Yep. Oh, it was pretty cool. Oh, that was pretty cool. Like, it's not like oh. a cap gun going off. Yeah. yeah. Did you uh, did you hear? I did an interview with him on the Barber Show. It was fantastic. We talked for like two hours, and I think it was good conversation. The guy, yeah. was, he's an interesting guy. Yeah. I was yeah. I really, yesterday. Yeah, I really like him a lot. So, yeah, got some positive feedback about that. Uh, you know, two hour conversation. He's like, ah, that's good. No, he's just, he's a cool guy. So, yeah, yeah. and I lo love the whole rum chowder story where I, I can't believe they're the people that invented that and, yeah. and then sold it, made money off of it. I mean, really funded the rest of their life. They're, they're good to go. So, crazy. All right. I've got uh, Penelope or Penelope, depending on how you like to say that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm hopeful here. This is pretty full, and I haven't opened it for a while, so let's see here. Eh, not enough, not enough. A uh, little sloshy, and uh, and the pop wasn't even as good as Jim, so it was it was a, a, a somewhat of a decent effort, but not near enough. So Jim wins. So cheers, gang. Cheers. 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 All right. Now, did you notice this? This is a Fosnot trait here. Heidi, when she comes in too, because she gets heat about all new bottles, her first bottle is always a used one. Then after that, it's all new ones. She wins the rest of them. So uh, we'll see if Jim does that too. I'll so show you my second, my, my next two. I have a twist okay. and a baker's. They're already sitting there, so I don't trade that. All right. All right. We'll see. Sitting. We'll see. All right. That's, a, way, that's a Heidi move, though. Uh, it's not official. I, not. He's throwing that out there, but this is not uh, until it gets uh, recorded. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. He could change his mind. Because we can't hold him to that. He pulls out a brand new bottle. He's like, well, I changed my mind. Uh, I, I do want to say how good this Leatherwood is. I forgot. We tasted this there. In oh, yeah. yeah. Holy cow. This is good. Good stuff. All right. All right. What we'll do next, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to be playing a bracket challenge to, to determine the best cheap wedding reception bourbon. We'll do that in just a few minutes.
let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott in the greater St. Louis area. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon as the ABV Barrel Shop only focuses on single barrels. We aren't open just yet, but our plan is to have the most diverse single barrel offerings from our many friends in the world of bourbon. By signing up for a weekly email, you will know our entire inventory we have on hand. In addition to single barrels, we'll have a tasting bar and a gift shop featuring logo merchandise for both the shop and the ABV network, as well as a full curriculum of bourbon education classes. Additionally, we'll use the gift shop to feature products from our partners in the world of bourbon, companies like Art Eatable Chocolates and Old Man Bay Signs. Head over to ABV Barrel Shop to sign up for our email and text distribution list so you can stay in the know. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent visits to Kentucky. Today, he's leading the way for young distillers making their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery combines family history, a look at what makes their products unique, and of course, a tasting through their whiskeys, moonshines, and creams. Check them out at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com and visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. I am Stephanie McNeil. You are listening to the Bourbon Daily. The real name of the palisade is a ampersand. Welcome back. Today on the show, we are doing a bracket challenge for the best cheap wedding reception bourbon. Yes, we are. So the, the wedding reception here is either a uh, cash bar, you've got to pay for it, or it's, it is inclusive, but you know, they just have bottom shelf stuff. And you know, so that's the idea. It says the, these are the wedding, you know, there's obviously there's great wedding receptions where you can probably go get bookers if you want to get a pour of that, but we're not talking about those type of weddings. Those aren't the type of people I hang out with. I'm more than likely to, if I get invited to a wedding to go to one where it's going to have, you know, like the selections that we have here. So uh, here are our eight contestants. These are the, the bourbons you asked for. What bourbons do you have? And they give you a list and here's what's on there. So Jim Beam White Label. Okay. That's the standard. Any place that has bourbon is going to have that. Bullet. Also, some, somehow, some way, Bullet has worked their way into being just everywhere. I don't know how. I don't know anybody that... I know people who are like, Beam, I, I can only have Beam. I'm a Beam drinker. I don't know anybody who's like, I, I only drink Bullet. I'm a Bullet guy. No, I, don't, I don't know that person, but they must exist out there because there's so a lot of it. Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark. Again, kind of like Beam. Pretty much any place that has bourbon pretty much is going to have Maker's Mark. Next one could be considered controversial uh, because there are people that say it's not bourbon. I say it is, but there are people that says it's not Jack Daniels. A lot of lists will have that on there as, as an offering. Uh, the next one, Crown Royal. Again, is it bourbon? Absolutely not, but it's on a lot of bourbon lists, oddly. I have no idea why. It's not even from this country, but uh, uh, it's Canadian whiskey, but it makes it on a lot of bourbon uh, lists, especially on uh, cheap places where they're not it's not going to be at your high-end bourbon shop or anything like that, but there are the places that uh, aren't really into it. They'll have it on there. Uh, Four Roses. And that's, we're talking just the basic one here, folks. So just what we what we call the yellow label, the fans, uh, that, that would be it. And then uh, the basic Evan Williams, too. So, again, you're talking the black label here, the one I'm talking about. And then last but not least, our favorite bourbon of all time, Tito's. Tito's. Uh, again, not a bourbon, but... They market themselves. You look at what they do. First of all, they market themselves with a pot still on the front, and it says pot distilled. Well, there's not very – a vodka that's pot distilled, that's almost hard to believe because you can't really get that high proof to, to make vodka. But I have to trust that, uh, that that's somewhat of the truth because they're putting it on the label. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suspend disbelief, and I'm going to say that's true. But the other thing I know is not true that's on their label is you see it, it's dripping into a barrel. That vodka does not drip into a barrel. Under no time does it ever go into a barrel. It's not stored in there. It's not put in there and then moved to another container. There's no barrel involved in the production. But on their label, it shows a 
pot still dripping clear fluid, which we assume is vodka, into a barrel. It's also not handcrafted by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, God, no. It's it, it mass says produced. On, it, it says on there, handcrafted. <laughs> it's <laughs> mass produced as can be. But yeah. I, and it's, not a, it's not a rip of the product. I'd love to own Tito's. And they've done amazing things. I don't know how yeah. they came out of nowhere. And yeah, but, they're, but, but again, uh, I don't know. that. But that's, that's, our, that's our bourbons. Again, don't, you don't have to write us any letters or send us any notes or say how much you hate us because we're, we're calling Tito's bourbon. We're just saying there are places that do. So uh, there we go. So uh, here's, here's how they're going to line up. Uh, Evan Williams' Black Label will take on Jim Beam. Uh, Four Roses will take on Bullet. Jack Daniels will take on Crown Royal. And Makers will take on Tito's. Round number one, we're going to have Justine start this thing out. Evan Williams' Black Label or Jim Beam? Oh, I'm a beam girl. I'm going with Jim. Okay. <clears throat> All right. What, what's your answer, though? I thought you were going with Jim Fosnott, and then what's your answer, though? <laughs> you're a dork. <laughs> All right, Kathy, you're next. Jim Beam or Evan Williams Black Label? Jim Beam apparently has the lead one, nothing. Jim Beam all the way. Jim Beam moves on. All right. Next up is Four Roses or Bullet. Kathy, you're first. Four Roses or Bullet? Four Roses. Four Roses goes up one nothing. What do you think, Jim? Four Roses or Bullet? Uh, you can't go wrong with the yellow level. It's a good, you know, for a everyday pour. There you go. There you go. Four Roses moves on. All right. Next up is Jack Daniels versus Crown Royal. Uh, Jim, you're going to be first on this one. Jack Daniels or Crown Royal? It shouldn't even be a competition. So or it, 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 even though like Jack Daniels wouldn't be my favorite to go through, I'll take it for Crown Royal all day long. <laughs> right. uh, you know, Jack does have some nuance, a little complexity to it. Crown Royal, you drink when you're 16 for a reason because uh, it's easy to drink. So no. No. I, I need clarification. Is it Crown Royal Peach? It is not Peach. No. <laughs> no. That would make a big difference, I guess. But uh, no, it is not. No, it wouldn't have made a big difference. Uh, super, super. Oh, yeah. Super allocated, the Crown Royal Peach. Uh, I love when that was a thing. You see, I saw people on Instagram looking for that, searching for Crown Royal. Are you kidding me? Oh. All right. Uh, Justine, you're next. Jack Daniels or Crown Royal? Jack Daniels. All right. That means Jack Daniels moves on. All right. Next up is Maker's Mark or Tito's. Maker's Mark or Tito's. We're back to Justine first. Maker's Mark or Tito's. I mean, it's pretty obviously Maker's Mark. <laughs> Let's Tito's? be honest. Let's just be 100% it's barrel aged. honest. It's barrel aged, for God's oh, sake. No. All right. All right. All right. Uh, Kathy, how about you? Maker's Mark or Tito's? You know, despite Tito's attempt to barrel age their vodka into bourbon, I am I, I like Maker's Mark. Okay. I would serve it. All right, Makers. Fair enough. We, we should have conspired before this show and made Tito's going to be the winner overall just to watch Steve's head explode. We should have, yeah. like, the three of us should have talked and then I told Steve and we just kept voting. All Tito. very compelling reasons why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he would get so much hate mail, oh, and yeah. then McNew oh, yeah. would get bombarded because he would just forward it all to oh, her. It goes to her first, so yeah, yeah she would definitely get classic. it. So, yeah. There'd yeah. be the, uh, there'd definitely be one we know for sure from Michigan. Not, and it's not Justine. There's uh, somebody from Michigan who likes to rail on me when the topic is not to their liking. So, uh, I guess I'll hear from them after that. So, uh, hey, Rob. <laughs> 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 All right, Jim B versus Four Roses. Uh, Kathy, you're first. <laughs> Jim Beam or Four Roses, Kathy? Kathy, can you hear us? Four Roses. <laughs> okay. We've been talking for like 10 minutes about oh, how yeah. Stephanie would just be so distraught with all these strange emails. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It stresses her out. All right. Four what talking about. Yeah. Four roses goes up one nothing. Jim, what do you think? Oh, Jim oh, Beam yeah. or Four Roses? I'll keep this alive because I think they're both uh both fair, but I'll go with uh I'll go with Beam on this one. Beam. Okay. That means Beam has tied it up. Uh next up we'll go to Ryan Thompson. Ryan, what do you think is a better cheap wedding bourbon, Jim Beam or Four Roses? It's tied up. Jim Beam all the way. Jim Beam all the way. Come on. All right. all right. All right. That means Jim Beam goes up two to one. Uh, Justine, you're next. Jim Beam. Jim Beam moves on. He loves Jim. 
She <laughs> <laughs> All right, round number six. Uh, up first is going to be Kathy. Round number six, Jack Daniels or Maker's Mark? What is the better wedding, cheap wedding bourbon? Jack Daniels or Maker's? Two good choices are actually. Um, I like Maker's Mark. I'm going to pick it. Maker's Mark goes up one nothing. Ryan, what do you think? Jack Daniels or Maker's Mark? Jack Daniels all the way again. Jack Daniels goes, uh, ties it up. Uh, Jim, you're next. Jack Daniels or Maker's Mark? It looks expensive because it is. I'm going to go with Maker's Mark. <laughs> Maker's Mark goes up uh, two to one. Justine, what do you think? Jack Daniels or Maker's Mark? I think I will go with Maker's Mark on this one. Maker's Mark moves on. All right. Our finale looks like this. Ryan, how you doing, man? Hey, good, guys. What's happening? Good, good. Oh, yeah. So it's a time zone thing. It happens. So, yes. We, we, we... My apologies. My apologies. Uh, no problem, Steve. He probably screwed up an email, something like that. It, it was on Steve. Uh, probably. <laughs> probably. I screw up a lot of stuff, so it could be that. It could be me. All right. Jim Beam versus Maker's Mark. This is our finale. Jim, you're going to be first. Jim Beam or Maker's Mark? Well, uh, nobody loves Jim like Jim, but uh, I got to go with Maker's Mark as the as the better as the better whiskey here of choice. I, I think Maker's, Jim, Maker's Mark goes up one nothing. Justine, what do you think, Jim Beam or Maker's Mark? I'm going to give Jim some love. All right, Jim uh, has tied it up. It's one to one. Uh, I'm next, Jim Beam or Maker's. This is a tough one. Uh, both pretty equal here. Um. But I would think I would choose the makers because it's higher proof. Uh, so I would go, I would be like, uh, I'm going to go, uh, I'll let proof be the tiebreaker. So I'll go makers mark. So makers mark goes up two to one. Kathy, what do you think? Jim Beam or makers mark? Same with makers mark. Makers mark is our champion. How about that? There you go. Now you know what to order next. So you don't even have to think about it. You go to a low end wedding and uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're uh, set now. You just get the order of the makers mark and you'll be fine. Or the for the record, I was leaning towards a maker's mark myself. So okay, okay, there you go. Yeah. For the record, I just bring a flask with me so I can have. One. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's the real thing you should do. Bring a just bring a flask. Bring a flask. All right. Well, we'll wrap this thing up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Ryan, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? Across all socials at Tenth MTN Whiskey, and our website is tenthwhiskey.com. All right, Kathy. How about you? Where can people find you? You can find me on Facebook, Kathy Cool. All right, Jim. You can find me on Facebook at Jim Fazat, on Instagram at Foz Jim, F A Z Z J M, or you can find me every Wednesday through Saturday working with Steve at the ABV Barrel Shop in Arnold, Missouri. Check us out. All right, Justine, how about you? You can find me on Instagram at J A underscore Maze. You can find our shop at abvnetwork.com and on Instagram at abvnetworkshop. All right. For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. The important website, those abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. We put all of our shows out there, which is very cool. There's a nice record of, of everything that we ever, maybe you want to hear an interview with Ryan Thompson. You're like, who is this guy? He comes in late. Who, what's he all about? Don't worry. There's <laughs> interviews with him out there. So check us out at uh, abvnetwork.com. Uh, Justine, anything else to say before we get out of here? I would just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. Also, if you like what we're doing, please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV network. All right. Great job today, gang. For our audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. 
Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the hazmat offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary or Neely Family Distillery's upcoming Papaw's birthday barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world. Way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with a national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by. But if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.